Hi guys and welcome back to another Scout the Defender YouTube video. Now today is a really interesting video and one that I've been requested to make so many times and that is what are the running costs or true costs of living with a Land Rover Defender. So I'm going to jump in the Defender because it's a freezing cold day and we'll start running through the true costs of living with a Land Rover Defender. So before we start, there's four things that we're going to cover in this video. The first of those, uh, what has gone wrong with the Defender in the two years of ownership? So along the way with a Land Rover Defender, you're always going to get unexpected problems. So I'm going to talk around some of those problems uh, and the costs involved. Then I'm going to talk around, um, I guess, the yearly running costs of running a Defender. So servicing, tax, insurance, MOT, uh, all of those kind of things and what's involved with running a car like this. We're then going to talk around some of the modifications. Um, obviously, the modifications are, are very uh, personal to each uh, Defender owner. So I'm going to talk around some of them, the, the ones that I guess enhance the Defender in terms of uh, either safety, security, uh, or general drivability. So we'll talk around those. And then finally, we'll talk around the purchase costs and whether over the two years of ownership, a Defender has actually been uh, a worthwhile investment, whether I've lost money, uh, or, or gain money um, and we'll talk about that uh, at the end of the video. So let's get right into it. So why did I purchase this particular car? Well this is the 2.4 Puma and I was after a Puma post 2007 because it had all of the extra excess requirements so the split leather um, seats Puma range is generally uh, a bit quieter, a bit more easy to live with than say like a TD, TD5 or 300 TDI. Um, so general comfort factor was involved. So obviously with this being my daily driver, I wanted it to be, uh, I guess, a little bit more refined inside. You obviously get uh, heated seats, uh, heated windscreen, AC. So that's why I went for the Puma model, which obviously uh, increases the cost of uh, purchasing the car. As this is my daily driver, I'm putting so many miles on it every day. Uh, that I wanted just those those extra refinements. In hindsight, I probably should have got the 2.2 as opposed to the 2.4. That being, uh, I go to London quite a lot and with the 2.4, I have to pay the low emission zone fees. With the 2.2, you can actually convert them so they're, um, I guess, emission compliant um, and probably would have been a wiser choice. Uh, but um, yeah, I guess that's that wasn't to be known at the time of purchasing this car. Right, so let's talk about problems. So with all defenders, you're never short of a problem or two. And along the two years of ownership, I've obviously encountered my fair share. The first being that actually within the first week of ownership, we had a turbo fail. Uh, driving up to Scotland on our very first, I guess, road trip, very excited to get Scout out on the road. Um, we lost a lot of power. Not being familiar with defender, defender driving mannerisms at the time, I just thought, you know, we'd they were generally really slow, but it turned out that the actual turbo uh, had failed. So we had to take that back to the garage. Thankfully, that was under warranty. That would have been a really hefty bill. Um, but yeah, as I say, it was under warranty, so we got that fixed. Along the same lines, we did also have a, a radiator um, issue. That resulted in a, a brand new radiator, which cost around 300 pounds. Um, the guys at LR Motors helped us out with that, but that was leaking coolant everywhere and again led to loads of power issues. Um, so that was another I guess, problem that we've had during the ownership. A smaller thing, but again, probably worth covering. Uh, the reverse switch uh, for the reverse lights broke. Uh, again, a real common problem with Defenders. That was about £65 to get the uh, switch replaced. Um, but again, one of those problems that's just a niggle with defenders uh, and it's a real common problem. We then had a fuel leak, uh, only a minor fuel leak. Basically the breather pipe had, had perished and got a hole in it. That's cost around £140 to fix. It's quite a, a big job. You have to drop the fuel tank and place the line. Um, so that's cost around £140. And finally, with it being an 11 year old car, we just replaced the battery. That was again around £140, £150 for the, for the battery. Um, 
but again it starts up so much better than it did i don't think i realized that it's still holding the original battery before um and it's obviously holding its charge a lot better and we're not having any kind of start or run issues now we've got that issue fixed so that is the i guess the overview of the problems that we've had there's been other smaller minor niggles but i don't think they're worth mentioning so um in general yeah a few few teeny problems and the cost involved with those Right, so onto the yearly running costs uh, of Scout. And again, I've got my notes here just to ensure that uh, I'm giving all the correct information. So uh, 80,000 miles, we had uh, the 10 year service. Now this is a pretty extensive service. Um, all of the oils changed, all of the filters changed, uh, general full uh, go over of the car. We had to have some of the uh, bushes replaced, so poly bushes, um, all of the oils filters changed. Um, that cost around £500. We obviously try to ensure that we service it uh, every year uh, and interval services are around £200 for you just your uh, oils and filter changes um, with the yearly services it's obviously much more um, extensive. Yearly tax, this costs around £275 uh, a year to tax uh, which are inevitably is going to go up as they try to drive these kind of cars um, off the road. So yeah, £275 pounds for uh, yearly tax. Insurance is very specific to each individual driver, but with this kind of car, with the modifications that I declare, it's actually quite expensive. It costs around 800 pounds uh, a year to insure. Next thing I wanted to talk about is all of the modifications and I guess some of the work that I've had done to ensure that Scout's either running as well as it can uh, or cosmetically uh, looks as good as possible. So when I first picked it up, there were a few areas of rust that I got treated. So the window blocks uh, needed to be um, replaced as they were rusting out. Uh, the roof had to be repainted in some areas. Uh, when people have taken the roof rack on and off, they've actually scratched the car. Uh, so I wanted to get all those cleaned up. So the window blocks were around 80 pounds. The roof paint was 300 pounds. And then in all of the door shuts, uh, again, a common place for loads of rust and bubbling of the paint. That was really bothering me when I got into the car. I could see it, all, all the rust everywhere. So I got that resprayed at a cost of 100 pounds. Uh, again, another common problem is the mirror arms. So they can easily rust out. Uh, you'll see it on most fenders. And again, on Scout, uh, some of them are starting to go again. Uh, so I got new mirror arms, which were around 50 quid. Moving on to, I guess, more protection. Um, Again, with Defenders, it's really common to see lots of surface rust and underneath it can really rot out really quickly. So I ensured that I got uh, the Defender under sealed as soon as I purchased it. Again, a pretty lengthy procedure because it has to be power washed and then under sealed. Uh, and I also got the cross member treated and resprayed. Uh, in total, that cost around £1,000. Again, the guys at LR Motors did a great job with that and it ensures that it protects the car for a long time to come. As standard, the Defender headlights are like candles, so we replace those with the ORE or light parts um, headlights supplied by ORE. They were around 360 quid, but they vastly improve uh, the, I guess, the illumination at night. I also did the whole car with LED lights as opposed to, again, the, the standard bulbs. Um, that cost around £175 for the whole uh, car. The next thing I fitted was the ORE rear wheel carrier. So again, another common problem if you're putting big wheels or heavy uh, heavy tires onto the back of the car is that the door can often crack uh, with the weight, especially if you're going off road on trails, the, the vibrations up and down can crack the rear door. So I fitted the ORE rear wheel carrier. Again, not, not necessary, but I think it greatly improves, I guess, the durability uh, of the back door. That cost around £550, uh, but again, uh, a well worth uh, buy if you're gonna be going off-road or fitting big tires to the back of the car. And then finally, uh, I tinted all of the rear windows. So that cost around £400 to uh, treat all of the windows with window tinting. I think it improves it cosmetically, but also from a security point of view, I'm not as nervous about leaving things in the car because you generally can't see in. Um, so again, that costs around £400. Then finally, moving on to performance. So I had the engine remap, which cost around 300 pounds. Um, again, something that I'd really recommend on the 2.4 Puma, it makes it so much more drivable daily, uh, so much more uh, power, um, and just generally improve the drivability of the car. So I'd recommend that. 
And then I also, alongside that, put a performance intercooler in, which cost, again, around 500 pounds. And uh, the guys at LR Motors did both. And I'm really happy with the results of the intercooler. Partnered with the uh, Remap means that just day-to-day -day driving in a Defender is a lot less mature uh, and really pleasurable. The final thing that I've spent quite a bit of money on, uh, and I'm actually going to talk about it in a separate video, is the security of the Defender. So obviously I fitted the optimal removable wheel and loads of other um, things to ensure that uh, the security is as best as it can be. As we know, these Defenders get stolen so regularly, it's so easy uh, if you've not got any security measures at all on the car. Um, and I've spent quite a lot of money ensuring that it's secure as it can be. I'm gonna talk around all of the security upgrades in a future video. So the final thing I wanted to touch on was the purchase cost of Scout. So obviously this is a, a 2.4 uh, XS uh, Puma from 2011. So specs will greatly uh, change the purchase cost. You can pick up defenders from five or six thousand pounds that obviously need considerable amounts of work or you can go for something like this which um, obviously needed little little bits of work and a little bit of kind of cosmetic uh, upgrades but generally was a sound car so this cost £21,000 to purchase and with the used car prices at the moment uh, I can see that I'd easily get my money back uh, and more with Defender prices climbing, um, two years ago I was desperate to get into a Defender before I was effectively priced out of the market, uh, so that's why I purchased it then. Uh, and I've yeah, loved every minute of it and loved making the content for you guys too. As always, please give it a like if you're enjoying the videos and also subscribe if you're enjoying the content. It really helps me out and I'm really trying to push the channel as far as I can. I've got loads of videos coming up in the future, uh, so stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.